Okay, so here's the notes on and I and I called it or I titled I titled it solving quadratics right as perfect squares. So they're already going to be they're they're already going to be at this point where it's already a perfect square, right? You've already completed the square right like that like that, the last assignment, the one that I told you, if you remember last week, I told you kind of start them, but don't finish them. Remember, if you guys, you guys are going to have to go back to that one and finish it. But this is why you need to, um, this is why you need to understand how some of those finish differently. Okay, so, so number one, let's say you're doing a problem and you're solving it by completing the square. And eventually you're going to get it down to something like this, especially the ones where you factor out like a number in the front. Okay. Let's say you're solving a problem and you get it down to this point where it's already here where you already completed the square. It's a perfect square. Okay, so tell me what would happen here. I mean, this one you should know. This one you should know. How would you proceed here? How would you finish this problem up? Yeah, we can't have this number here. So we got to divide by 2. Yep, that's right. We cannot have that. We cannot have any number here. I just need this squared part alone. So you're going to divide everything. Yeah, correct. And so those will cancel. Okay, so now we're going to have, again, this one is something that you should know how to do. So that's where I want to pick it up here. And yeah, 24 divided by 212, right? So now you have this. This is what you want. This is where you want it, where you want it, the, the square here, the completed square here, alone, and then a number over here. Because now you do what? You square both sides. Correct. Okay, okay. Again, this one is one that you already know how to do. There's really nothing new on this one. So I just wanted to start with one of them that, you, that you're familiar with. Okay, and everybody agree we're going to be left with x plus 5 is equal to plus minus, and then the square root of 12? Yeah. Yeah, and then we know 12. We always look at this number. See, one, see if it's a perfect square. It's not a perfect square, but 12 can be broken down to 4 times 3. 4 times 3, right? So that'll be x plus 5 is equal to plus minus the square root of 4 and then the square root of 3. Some, some of you can maybe afford to skip this step. I don't recommend it. But why do I need to look at this and make sure I don't mess up? Some people are writing it the wrong way. So what is the right way that this should be done on this side? It should be 2 root 3. Some people write it the other way. They leave the 2 inside and they bring the 3 out. That's wrong. We're good, right? We know this already. Again, this is a problem that you already know. And see, now that this side is done, there's nothing more to do with this side, then you move this over, right? So the final answers here that you're going to leave in this form here is what? X is equal to what? Negative 5 plus minus 2 root 3. And these you don't have to solve or just leave it like this because of the radical. You don't have to get like two answers here. Just leave it like this. Okay. Remember I told you this first one is something you already know? Okay, you've been doing these and we've been doing these like this and you're fine with this. Okay, now you're going to see how they're going to finish different. And there's going to be uh, things that are going to come up that are different. Okay, look at this next one, number two. Number two here. Now something's going to happen here. What about, uh, we'll just try a different letter. N minus two squared equals... Uh, 4 over 9. What if you get a problem and it's, and it's at this point? Can somebody tell me what the problem would look, would have looked at, would have looked like before getting to this? Can anybody tell me what it would look like? What would the problem be so that then it becomes this? Anybody can tell me? Wouldn't it be 9 in front, n minus 2 squared equals 4? You guys agree? But then you divide by 9 and you divide by 9. Everybody agree we get to this, yes? Okay, now, here's where the mess begins. We don't want a fraction on this side. When you have a fraction on this side, oh, some of them are going to work out nice, some of them are not. Luckily for you, this one's going to work out nice. The other ones will not. How do I know it's going to work out nice? Because a 4 is a perfect square number. And the 9 is a perfect square number, right? Because aren't I ready to square both sides? Yeah. 
So when you do take the square root of both sides, which is the next step, yes, you're going to get n minus 2 is equal to, yes, you better put plus minus. But when you have a fraction, what does the square root go to? Which number does it go to? It goes to both. So you got to understand that you're looking at this. Yeah, it goes to both like this. And I told you this one works out nice because 4 is a perfect square number and so is 9. So really we have what? n minus 2 is equal to plus minus what? 2 over, 2 over 3. Everybody agree? The square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. Okay. And you're like, okay, I can handle that. What's the big deal about that? Okay, well, the big deal is this. Everybody agree when I move this over, it's going to be n is equal to 2 plus minus 2 over 3? Yeah. We're good? Now this one, you should be able to give me the two answers. All right, go ahead. I'll give you a minute. Give me the two answers. Go ahead. Finish that one up. Okay, so how would you, you have to add this up. You can multiply the two. You multiply the two? Why? Why do we need to do that? You add a denominator as one. Yeah. So watch here. Yeah. Once you have one of them that's a fraction, then everything else to be a fraction too. So I'm going to do it like this. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, does everybody agree this is 2 over 1 plus or minus 2 over 3? The 2 is a 2 over 1, right? And like I just said, once if this one has a fraction of 3, I got to get this one to also have a fraction of 3. You guys remember how to do that? Yeah, what do we have to do? Well, if I want this one to become a 3, you got to multiply this one by 3. But whatever you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator, everybody agree? Did you do that? So really, 2 over 1, another way to say 2 over 1, which is 2, isn't this going to become 6 over 3, 6 divided by 3? It's still 2. It's still 2, right? 6 divided by 3 is still 2, but I need, I need it in this form so that, I can, so that I can make this work out and add. Yeah? So now from here. I got them to have the same denominator. Now I can split these up and work it out. One of them is going to say what? 6 over 3 plus 2 over 3. And the other one's going to be 6 over 3 what? Minus 2 over 3. Then you're going to give me the two answers. One of them is going to give you 8 over 3. This one? 6 plus 2, 8 over 3. This one's going to be over here what? 6 take away 2. 4 over 3. Okay, we're going to do another one just like that real quick, a lot quicker now. Everybody see what happens now when there's fractions? It's going to, it's going to get a little messy. It's going to be other stuff that's going to happen the way it's going to finish out. Let's do number 3, another one similar to that one, number 3. After that, it gets even, even more complicated. Okay, number 3. is x plus 4 squared equals 16 over 25. Let's see, let's say you get it to this point where it's already a perfect square. And then how do you finish this up? Damn, it has a fraction. It's OK. I like 16 and I like 25, right? Those are perfect square numbers. So yeah, when I take the square root of both sides, it's going to work out. It's going to work out nice. Everybody agree we're going to have x plus 4 equals what? Plus minus 4 over 5. Yes, 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 yes. We're good? Yeah. And then that's going to be what? x is equal to negative 4 plus minus 4 over 5. Is that right? Yeah. And then I'm like, damn, I could add these. I got to add these up. I got to figure it out. And I have a fraction. So I got to have everything with a fraction. This is really a negative 4 over 1 plus minus a 4 over 5. What do we have to do to make this work? Well, I'll have the same denominator. If this is a 5, what do I got to do here? Multiply by 5, multiply by 5. 
and change this. Okay, everybody agree we're going to get um, negative 20 over 5 plus minus. We're okay with this? 4 over 5? Yeah. And then from here we're going to get to, we're going to split this up and, and figure out two answers, right? One of them is going to say negative 20 over 5 plus a 4 over 5. And the other one's going to say negative 20 over 5 minus 4 over 5. Is that right? Yeah. And what's gonna what's what's it gonna be? This one's gonna be uh, negative sixteen. Yep. And what's this one gonna be? Okay. Those are kind. Of, those are easy. Those are the easy ones. It works out. Why are these the easy ones? Why do these work out? Because these are perfect square numbers. Even if, even though they're fractions, it's a perfect square number. Here's where it's going to get messy when they're not perfect square numbers. Okay, so here goes number four. Everybody okay? Any questions on number three? All right. Okay. Here goes number four. Okay. Um, no, I don't like that one. Where's the other one? Okay, this one. 18 parentheses x minus 4 squared is equal to 10. Everybody agree I got to divide by 18, divide by 18, right? I can't have that there. I want the square alone, so that's x minus 4 squared is equal to? 10 over 18. You guys should know that already, okay? And before you get excited and start moving on, always when you have this fraction, always look to reduce. Can this be reduced or simplified? Yeah. 10 and 18 can reduce by a 2 at least, right? That's going to be x minus 4 squared equals uh, 5 over 9, yeah? 5 over 9. Good news, bad news. Good news, one of these is a perfect square root. One of them is not. You guys see that? Because that's the next step, right? The next step is to square root both sides. And then you're going to have this. And when you do a square root to a fraction, guess what? They both get it, right? The top one gets square rooted, if it can square root, and the bottom one also gets it. All right. And what did I say? Oh, yeah, one of them is a perfect square number, the 9. Whew, all right. So I got, oh, what did I do? Why did I do that? No, 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 no. This is not squared anymore, right? It's just x minus 4, right, because I squared it already. Sorry. Is equal to what? Plus or minus, does everybody agree the bottom's three? Because the square root of nine is three. But the five is, is gonna just stay at a square root of five. Okay. We got that? So. The good thing is that the denominator doesn't have a square root. You can have the denominator to be a square root. I don't know if you guys remember this from, from Algebra 2, but anyways, um, the good thing it's not. It doesn't have a square root. It's a whole number. The top one can have a square root, but not the bottom one. Anyways, let's continue. Let's move over the 4, right? That's going to be x is equal to plus my... No, 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 no. Mr. Yes.
Okay, so let's finish this. Yeah, the negative, that negative 4 comes over, so that becomes a positive 4 plus minus the square root of 5 over 3. Yeah? And again, once, if you see one of them that has a fraction, we've got to have them all to have that same fraction or that same denominator, so we've got to fix this answer. We can't leave it like this. You won't see the answer like this. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. Everybody agree 4 is 4 over 1? Yeah. 4 over 1 plus minus the square root of 5 over 3. So what do I want to have to make happen here? I want this one to become a, a 3, right? So i got to multiply that by 3. And if that multiplies by 3, this multiplies by 3. So we're going to have... 12 over 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. Now this one, we're not going to find the answers and add them or subtract them, subtract them because of the radical, right? When we have the radical or the i, we don't need to do that. But it's still not finished. Anybody know how to write this in a final form, in final form? 12. X is equal to 12. Plus minus radical five. radical 5, the whole thing over 3. See, now that they both share that same 3 as a denominator, then you write it like this. Correct, correct. And don't do what? Don't do this. This is a big, huge no-no. Don't reduce. Oh, look, 12 and 3 can reduce and give us 4. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. Okay, just leave it like that. Because 12 is not by itself. It's 12 plus this. See, it's not just 12. So just leave it like that. Okay, let me do... Uh, do I have another one that's like this? No. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here. There's, there's a couple more examples and more problems that finish a totally different way. Okay, it's a lot more complicated. But I'm going to give you just... Uh, I'm going to stop it here. Let me stop the video. I'll let you do half of the assignment today and I'll continue the, the video and the notes on this and we'll do the other problems on the next video tomorrow.